This is Bratislava, capital of Slovakia. A vibrant and cultural hotspot for the country. It shares something in common with another three European capitals. It's built on the banks of the mighty river Danube. Europe's second longest river is an international waterway meandering its way through 10 European countries. But this episode isn't about the river, it's about what dwells within. The Danube is home to some of the world's largest freshwater fish. These fish are the sturgeons. Often described as living fossils, they haven't really changed for over 200 million years. Out of the 25 species found in rivers, lakes and coastal waters around the Northern Hemisphere, the River Danube is home to six of these species. And the river basin preserves some of the most important sturgeon populations in the world today. Because it flows through 10 countries, 83 million people live along the Danube's banks and they rely on it for food, agriculture, industry and trade. But humans have put huge pressures on sturgeon populations, not only in the Danube, but all over Europe. This is Thomas Friedrich, from the Life Sturlet project in Austria. The decline of the sturgeons, it's, uh, we don't have to talk about the Danube here, we can actually talk about all over Europe, it's uh, nearly the same. And uh, there's two major drivers, one of them is overexploitation, and this overexploitation already took place in the 14th, 15th and 16th century, uh, because these fish were really easy to catch, they were really big, so they were really easy uh, source of protein for, for humans. And this overexploitation really led to, to putting the stocks on an extremely low level already within the 20th century. And then with the construction of uh, dams, hydropower plants, uh, the migration barriers, the migration routes were lost and many populations were cut off their spawning grounds and they started to diminish. Other factors have come into play as well. Since the 16th century, People have been changing the natural course of the rivers for flood protection and navigation, which has had a profound negative effect on biodiversity in the river. But it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. Thomas oversees the Life Sturlet project, a conservation mission aiming to support a sustainable population of sturlets the smallest species of the Danib sturgeons and one that is teetering on the brink of extinction. To do this, they'll need to apply innovative methods for breeding the sturlets before releasing them. It's here within these rather inconspicuous shipping containers that the breeding process begins. These breeding pools provide a temporary home for sturlets at each life stage from tiny eggs until they're big enough to release. The team will be targeting two free-flowing sections of the Austrian Danib in the Wachau and the Danib National Park regions. These areas are home to particularly diverse habitats offering the greatest chance of sustaining populations of the sturlet for future generations. Even though the future may seem bleak for these living fossils, there clearly has been steady progress towards their recovery. The most important condition for success has been, and remains, joint cooperation, whether political, scientific or economic. When the habitat and the ecosystem 
is working fine for this species, it will work fine for the other species as well. You really act like a protecting umbrella over the other species and the ecosystem. And as they're really big and really strange, they're also easily used as flagships, meaning you can really use them for public education, uh, public relations, and really tell people what is actually going on. If you want to find out more about the Live Sterlet project, as well as lots of extra info about these amazing fish, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more from us, hit the subscribe button or let us know what your thoughts are in the comments.